Hi, everybody. I'm interviewing our new captain, Louis Caselli. What's up, man? Oh, my Jack. Yeah, I'm good. Tony Diamato. Uh, Petey Diamato, our last year's captain. So, um, how you doing, man? Good, mate. Don't like I'm doing good. Coach hey. Diamato, our captain from the past. How are you? I'm fine. I'm having a great time, Michael. <laughs> That's good. Tony Knight, how are you? All right. How you doing? Mark Doodles to Jesse Jr. That's me. Frankie Bones, how are you, man? What's up, Mike? How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thank good you for day. asking. Ronnie Kenny, how are you, man? How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. That's good. How long have you been in the Vikings? Uh, I guess you could say since I was born. My, my mom was a choreographer. My, my whole family's in the club. Yeah, so since I was a little guy running around. Since I've been, pretty much I've been born, since 1988. It's been about 30 years, but uh, as far as the first suit, I'd say in 94, Funky Town. Um, I was a little, you know, gangster dude in the little playground. As I got older, I stopped dancing, got more into like the crew area, but um, you know, but been a Viking for life. Come on, Mike, that's a difficult question. <laughs> Come on, again. Since 1986. We <laughs> always get confused if 86 is our year or 87 is our year. <laughs> so it could possibly be 32 years or it's 33 years. It started in 1970. It was just the South Philly Commons. And then in 1986 it became the South Philly So it's been, I think next year it'll be 50 years. And 30 years. This is my 19th parade. And all, all but one with the Vikings. Well, pretty much my whole life from when I was born. It was back when... Uh, we were a wench brigade, and my mom was in, my family, my grandparents, Butchie, and they moved it into the Vikings, and ever since then, it's all I've ever known. My first year actually technically dancing was 2006. I only did one year, got first place, one for one. Retired after that, became a marshal since then. Uh, this is my 19th year, now going into the Vikings, my 35th year overall in the parade. And I'm uh, just glad to be doing it here with the Vikings now. What was your favorite Vikings theme? I have to say the 1996 uh, superpowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the superheroes. Good. My mom was Catwoman. Um, Dawn Diamato, she was. Uh, cameras couldn't take their eyes off her. I mean, it was <laughs> pretty amazing. But the whole show itself was just incredible. You know, the music was insane, especially for that time. You didn't hear anything like that in a show. My favorite rugby theme is King Kong. Yeah, that's yeah, a good one. That's right? a really good one. All right. Every one of them. Every year, I love every theme. We've built great memories with all kinds of friends. It's hard for me to depict and say I like any one of them. Even the ones that didn't do so well. I still have great memories. I have the name uh, Motor City for the fact that I think we, we kind of uh, shocked everybody with the uh, type of theme that it was and the way we built floats and loop floats and the amount of energy in that show is just incredible. But like I said, it's hard for me to pick that one and that's my favorite. One of them I might say was the radio show for the fact that I always believe in memories. Uh, it's not a popular thing, but they out of your heart. It was 1992 when we did that show. And we had no money, we had 28 hours. And we almost won the whole parade. This organization did every single thing. Costume, clothes, music, choreography, artwork, everything was done in-house by South Philly Vikings. We almost won the entire break. It was sexy. It was uh, one of my favorite things I drank about because we worked so hard at it to still stay competitive. This year. <laughs> okay, good one. Uh, I think it has to be the Indian show. It's one of my favorites. Powerful, strong, beautiful. Yeah, I remember that. It's tough because we do so many great themes, you know what I mean? Indians is probably my favorite. I also love Mime Year. Avatar? Avatar is up there, but Kong. Kong? Kong Year, and I love the bug theme. Junkyard Evolution, they may not have been winners, but they're some of my favorites. Blowing Circuits, old school. I try to have one from every like generation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we have so many great ones, it's hard to choose. It's a mix between the two, um, like the uh, Indians in 06. Mm. And it's my year <laughs> in 2013. Uh, two great shows, dance movement. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a great show. Yes. 
How do you like the transition and working with new captain Louis Caselli? I mean, it's been wonderful. I mean, we've been working close together. Um, I'm his co-captain, and um, I mean, we work like it's just like a cheeseburger, you know, <laughs> you know burger and bun. He does so good with formations and, and the drill and the vision and me executing the visuals with the colors and, and all the background stuff, and it's just, it's been a, you know, perfect match. I mean, oh, it's been awesome. It's great. It's done a great job, man. Everybody don't realize he did a lot of work last year. Started off really then, and um, he's just moving. He's moving good, man. Teams together, we're moving strong, and he was a good captain. I agree. I really agree. I know you. You were a great captain. Well, thank you. I always love a change for the fact that uh, it gets kind of uh, wearing on an existing captain. Very, very, very hard. People don't realize when you take the role of captain, how stressful it is. Something you never put down, you can't even sleep, you can't, and then after so many years of doing it like this, my brother Pete, who's done a phenomenal job, a number of years with me and stood behind me, and stood behind Petey, and it's not an easy job, so the transition is to watch the younger generation step up and uh, move forward, I'm excited for, for them, regardless of what our outcome is, I love every show, and I'm really impressed with the, the details that the young, the young group is putting together. I love it, young guy, excitement, energy, energy. It's, it's fun. You know, you know, everybody knows Lou's one of my best friends, so working here with him by the business and then having a friendship too is cool. See watching him grow as a captain is fun. Just seeing it from last year, like, you could tell he was starting to take over slowly in the process. And like a couple people probably already said, it's December now and it's like nothing's changed. There was no stoppage, no bumps, no speed bumps. It's honestly like a PD 2.0. Yeah. Running the club up there, it's just a new face in front of the club. That's it. I mean, ever since I met Louis, you know what I mean? He had it since he was a little kid. And now he's rolling up and you see him now. And he took over well. Nothing changed, I should say. What is your favorite mummers moment of all time? I gotta say, probably one of the best, the best feelings so far is um, finding out we won on uh, 2015, going up first, you know, being behind the eight ball on something, doing something that nobody thought we were going to be able to do, and being able to accomplish that is still one of the best moments, I think. Definitely the, the, the Uncle Butchie uh, raising the flag up in, in the Superpower show. That was probably one of my favorite moments in a show. Um, going around the club back when we were young kids, um, running around the old warehouse, uh, me, Frankie, Louie, Anthony, all the cousins. I mean, we would run around the club, you know, younger than you, you know, like Dom, Petey's age. Um, just run around terrorizing. Mark Moss gave us the name eventually, the Axis of Evil. And then now we turn into, you know, the ex, the cousins. Now going around and being petrified of a giant King Kong. Was, you know, we were gonna scared we were going to fall into his mouth. And, and <laughs> yeah. My favorite one was when, um, seriously, is when we marched first. And one first. Yeah, I yeah. Announced that to the club. Yeah, that, that was, was the best. Yeah, that was that was an awesome. Uh, that was an awesome time. I think that in my my moments, I will tell you when I watch all our youth. I watched most of them before, and I feel like I lived three lifetimes. But you gotta imagine 50 years of being in charge. How many people have met here? Started their families here, and I know we have all kinds of stuff that goes on. But when I sit out back and watch. Young kids dance with the energy that they had. The ones that were born and raised it, it's incredible. That's the moments that I most live. Probably 1995 when we found out we won the first place. And it was my first with the Vikings, that was the best. So my favorite mother's moment uh, would be 2015, our Chinese show, the element show. Uh, we went first, we had our backs against the wall. Everybody came out to sell. But uh, we got our core of the club, and they all believed in us, and we believed in each other. So we went out there, we did our thing, and the rest is history. A lot of the winning announcements, especially March first, went first. But probably there was actually a funny story where it was a Arabian year, and me and cousin John had to let the fire extinguishers off at a certain time. So we're sitting on the uh, scaffold, and Big Butchie comes around. He says, 45 seconds, he leaves. Little Butchie comes around, 35 seconds. Which one do we pick? We don't know. 
Big butchie comes back round. 45 seconds, don't forget. Little butchie comes back round. 35 seconds, don't forget. They heard each other say it, so they start arguing and walk away. So we don't know what time to go, 45 or 35. We said, we'll just do it in the middle. Well, show starts, we let off the fire extinguishers at like 40 seconds. We hit about three people sliding down the ramp with fire extinguishers. So that's probably one of my funnier favorite stories. Favorite mummers moment all the time. You gotta uh, know this one. Yes, I do have a good one. Everyone has a favorite. Uh, 2013, we're coming down 2nd Street after the show. Gerald's the captain, so we get the call and he grabs me and, and we walk up to the truck. Now 2nd and Mifflin like, is the most crowdedest spot on 2nd Street. So everybody's out and everybody's watching us. He picks up the phone and he just falls. And I'm like, huh. Okay, well I guess we won, but now I gotta get him up. <laughs> <laughs> so now so now I get him, I'm like, Jerry, I'm like, come on. I look back at the truck to see the guys, and you just see the truck and you see head on top of head, like trying to peek up and look at us and see what place we got. And then he just looks at me and he starts crying. He was like, oh. and I'm like, gee, you gotta go straight face. I say, you can't go back here crying, happy, you can't, straight face. That's all I remember down. So we get back to the truck. He just jumps on the truck. He said something and uh, that, it was over that quick. He couldn't hold it. He couldn't hold it. He was just crying. I mean, him falling down. You know I mean, when he got the call, it was probably one of the best moments I ever had. How do you feel about this year's Vikings team, the Galactic Circus? I think it's going to be something really special once it all comes together. You know, it's, it's something that our theme committee's talked about for a long time, and we were just waiting for the right time to, to pull it out, and I, I think this is the best year to do it. It's definitely um, out of this world. I mean, it's it's got a lot of, you know, on-the-floor gimmicks. It's got, you know, visuals. It's got cool screen stuff. I mean, it's, it's going to be another cool show. I mean, it's going to add to just our long list of great shows that we've put on. Ever since we've put it out there, a lot of people go, oh, I always thought about that thing. I always thought about that thing. It's perfect for you guys. So it's just, you know, um, something me and Louie worked hard on, did a lot of research on, and uh, hopefully it all comes together in the years next. Oh, like anything else, I mean, it, it's there, you know. It's about, see everybody just th goes about the theme and they always go, oh, what do you think about this year's theme? Which um, everybody don't realize, you know, our team, when we put these themes together, and, and Louie's doing a great job with it, is it goes by our visuals and suits and, and the things that we have going on. So um, the theme's great. Any theme that we pick, you know there's going to be some gimmicks and there's going to be some great visuals. I agree. Right? Definitely. So that's what everybody should be worried about. Yeah. Right? It's not about winning. It's not about It's losing. not about the theme that we picked. There's a reason why we picked the theme, and there's a reason why Louie picked this. I absolutely love the theme. Uh, our group, again, the Vikings have a folder. And for certain years, at certain times, we pick a theme that we think fits uh, the time. And we think that this theme fits the time. What is 2019 is time. Oh, yeah. It's the type of theme I think that members get involved in and also gets the crowd involved too, so it's going to be fun. We're taking a, a trip to Earth. We have a bunch of different creatures, you know, that fits our club perfect, which you know everybody's an alien and this is called rock. Uh, they're all coming back home and we're going to perform a circus. This is a theme that involves a lot of creativity. A lot of gimmicks, a lot of out of this world stuff. And I think if anybody can pull it off, it's us. With the way we are, the way our team is, the way our creative team is, theme committee, everything, we can pull it off. I love it so far, you know what I mean? I think it's a theme that fits us. I think we can elaborate with it. It's like a type of show that we go out and we try to do. So, uh, so far so good. But I'll let you know on New Year's night, because if we get first or second, I'm going to love it. But if we get seventh or eighth, I'm going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to probably feel the same way, too. <laughs> Would you prefer Broad Street or the Convention Center? Well, uh, you probably were a little kid when yeah. you were on Broad Street. I was young when we were on Broad Street. Um, it's a different parade now. Right now, it's what we do in the Convention Center, we won't be able to do in the strip on the street. As much as I think the street's awesome and bright lights and you know that atmosphere I think I prefer 
being inside than the convention center, just for the quality of show that we could put on. Uh, I definitely prefer the convention center. Um, I agree. Uh, the shows aren't limited like they would be uh, on the street. The convention center just gives you a lot of more room with not just technology, just comfortability with the floats, the, with the weather, the wind. Um, I mean, um, shows been ruined by the weather. I mean, put hundreds of thousands of dollars into a show. You know, and this is for any club, not just ours. I mean, and it, and it just goes wrong trying to get it from Broad and Oregon all the way to, you know, um, City Hall. The, it's better for the parade being inside in a, or at least the fancy brigades in a closed environment. Wow, that's a good question. I do miss City Hall, but uh, Convention Center is way easier. Way easier. And then I don't think three quarters of the people marching now ever even marched on Broad Street. And it is hot. It is difficult because of the, the long day and all the hard work, you know, getting everything up the street. But for me, being an old-timer, <laughs> city hall all day long, baby. Yeah. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were a captain one time in city hall. Yeah, yeah, my brother made me captain, uh, I don't even know, 1992. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. He pulled me off the corner, I was drinking a 40, he told me I need a dancer. Yeah. And then he hollered at me all the way up Broad Street. And then um, everything else was history. Yeah, nah, I'm not kidding at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's such a joker. <laughs> he got us in the convention center in 1978, the first year. Well, I helped. I helped uh, with a concept to come in the convention center. It took a little politics to it, and uh, a lot of people were a part of that, but it was my brainchild for the fact that we had a warehouse where we would be so prepared and started sharing it with the other clubs so that some of the smaller clubs could make and do a better show in a place like this where as if you were on the street, I think we'd be probably down to five or six per game. And here at the Cleavemore store starting to look better and a lot of small clubs that were really diminishing. I think help the Benson Center help them survive. There's another thing attributed to this organization. They get together and they help each other marshal. So that's an important thing. You can build stuff and at the same time Doing the show without enough bodies is very important for that. Our organization being the South Lake Lakers set an example as to help another club because we want everybody to be at their best. I'm an old kid. I would say coach. I never personally did Broad Street, but um, now with the technology that we use and how elaborate our shows are, I think if we go to back to the street, it pushes us back. And so I think being in the convention is great. I was really young during the Broad Street times, and from what I hear, it was amazing. But I personally think you mentioned that. Yeah. A lot of smaller clubs benefit from it. We help, me being a marshal since 2007 or whatever it was, we're always helping other clubs push their floats. Can you imagine on Broad Street, they have to push their floats from Oregon to City Hall? They won't have enough people to help them, and it might cause some clubs to fold. So I think it's better when the convention center, we can all help each other. I'm old school, Mike. I like the hall. Something about them lights when you turn the hall. Like I seen grown men like come to tears being at night time with them lights and the way they shine and the, with the crowd. It was a whole nother animal, which I do like the convention center. Don't get me wrong. I like it in there. There's no, there's no winds in there. The floats move nicer. Everything, but I gotta go with the hall. Do you have any funny Louis Caselli stories? Myself. I think, I think we're at the skip. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Lou. I have a million. We've been together since we were born, but I'll just stick to one. It was 2004 going into 2005. We were doing uh, Egyptians that year. Me and him had to run up the steps to set the bombs off, put them on the door. We ran down and we jumped off the steps. Everyone all year was saying how my jump was better. So New Year's Eve, him and Anthony Gatto broke my ribs. And that day, I had to go down a lower step, and I couldn't really roll that good. And ever since then, Louie keeps saying that he had the best roll, when really he hurt me just to have the better roll. I want him to know that, because he goes around bragging about it all the time, how his roll was better. So that's my fun of Louie's story. Mainly when he was a little kid, when he would come and do all the drills, constantly. He would come up, he would come up to the club, and he would do every drill. He would do every drill when we were drilling at practice. So all my memories of Louie, they're, they're great when he was a kid. Not, I mean, not all, obviously. I have some great with him now, but that's what I remember Louie doing. I knew 
from then that he had a shot to be a captain, and he is, so I'm proud of him. Yeah, he is your nephew after all. He's my cousin. Yeah? But he is like a nephew. Yeah. One is, I believe it was the year we did march first and, and win first, when I slept here overnight with about eight guys, a joker, <laughs> a Saturn alien, and a few other people we didn't know. <laughs> and um, we, we took a little cat that for about a half hour, and then my bro brother popped in with coffee and, um, and egg sandwiches. So we got up and figured, you know what, we've been drinking all night, we won. We need to brush our teeth. So we did shots. And then after that, it started a thing where everybody who came up had to brush their teeth by doing a shot. Yeah. Yep. And then we felt refreshed. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny at that point. I mean, I don't know, my wife didn't think it was that funny at that time <laughs> when I got home about 8 o'clock at night, but yeah, it was a funny story. Yeah, I think one of the best was I used to see my cousin Mia because she was our choreographer at the time when I was a one of our choreographers. And I would meet her at her home, and uh, Louie and little Frankie grew up together like, like the two little chipmunks that was like in the pile playing Paris. I don't think they were three or four years old. It was just incredible to watch them two put shows together while we were in, the, in another room putting serious business down. They were playing parade already. So here we go now as adults and they're doing it in a serious way for this organization. You can't be more bored and bred into that than that. Ronnie, any, any funny Louis stories? You don't have, you know, it's not necessary, but. Oh, I mean, they're all short stories. <laughs> It only take a minute. <laughs> Thank you. What made you want to be captain? Growing up, you look at you know PD Butchie, you know when I was younger, and you know you want to do that, you want to be that guy, you want to be the guy in the front of the show, you want to be able to lead the club in, in the right direction and have fun. What are some of the challenges that you are facing as a new captain? I mean, I wouldn't call it so much as a challenge, but, you know, the hardest thing right now, I would say, would be um, the crossover with all my friends um, in the club looking at me as the captain. All these years we've been real close with my friends, and now I'm the captain and the guy that's standing in front of the club. It's a fine line, and it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to put that line in the sand. What are you looking to accomplish as a new captain? I want to make sure that everybody feels the same way they felt for the past 30 years as a Viking. You know, I just want to make sure that the show that they're putting out on the floor that day, you know, they're all proud of, just like every other show we put out. I just want to keep up to the Viking standard. I'm going to be competitive. I'm going to have fun doing it. How did it feel being captain for years? Again, uh, you, you grow to a point where when, when think back as a young fellow starting out, I mean, I tell you a funny story, like they dressed us terrible in the comics, meaning my uncle, and I think that made me a frustrated mama where I'm a nut for detail for the fact that I've been out there where I didn't have a great look of suit or a theme, and I was embarrassed. I promised myself when I was involved in this, I would never want our organization to walk out and be embarrassed by putting on not only a theme, but a costume that I wouldn't be proud to wear myself. Where did the concept of this year's theme come from? I mean, again, like I said, it, it was something that has been, it's been on our, on our table with the theme committee for years now, you know, and it's, it's been brought up every year with different twists and turns. This year, it, it had some visuals with it and that, that, really, that really struck us and being the changing and judging and everything, it gave us an opportunity to do something that's fun, upbeat, energetic, and still be theatrical. And, no, I just think it was our it was our best pick. What is the creative process of this theme? We start rolling right after right after the new year. You know, you'll catch us up here on January too sometimes, talking about oh you know next year we got we got to roll with this show. From there we just kind of we meet the whole the whole committee comes and they they throw different themes on the table. You know, we go back and forth about it. All their research they put together, they send it to us. You know, we look over it and. From there, it just it, it escalates to putting a show together. You know, what has the best visuals, what has the right music, you know, what's our best direction. And from there, we decide 
what our best option is. Okay. What kind of stuff of screens are we using this year? We're using uh, pretty much big uh, 360 screens in the front, back, and uh, we're going to have a very cool, which I can't say yet, but gimmick with the screens. That's oh, gonna get. I'm getting excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be good, whatever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's gonna, you're going to see it right from the open. On New Year's Day, how do you prepare yourself for the parade? Nothing. I mean, there's really no, there's no, there's no formula. There's no ritual. You know, we just get up in the morning and hope for the best. <laughs> how do you like the makeover of our new club? It's amazing. Before we were all cram packed in that little bar area, and other people were in the thing. It's like we weren't connected. Now I've been up here for a couple parties since we remodeled it. It don't even look like there's a lot of people. I'm really the place is packed. Everybody's together having fun. Can't ask for nothing better. Um, I do have one final question for you. It's going to be big. What can we expect for this year's team? If everything comes together that, that I see, you're going to expect something that, that, that really is special. I think when it all comes together, it's going to be something that is fun, energetic, theatrical, and it's really going to be something different than the normal. We're going to go out, have fun, draw hard, and put another plaque on the wall. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time having me, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, congratulations to Louie on being a captain. And, uh, you know, Vikings number one forever. It's been nice having you, man. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. Last Cat production. Last PD D'Amato captain. All right. Come on, man. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, man. It's been having you, man. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the time. And you know I love you as well. You and your family have been a part of our fabric. And thank you so much for being a part of our club. Taking the time to film everything, a special moment for us in the future. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Who's the interview with you, man? Same here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's good having you, man. You too. Well, you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime, man. Anytime. Good having you, man. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, man. Well, thank you for your time, man. You're a great captain, man. <laughs> Thanks. Nice, man. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Doodles, Doodles Productions, taking it from Mikey Cat. Yeah! <laughs>